I really love this painting. It was painted by an artist named Fildes in the late 1800s, uh, and it's called The Doctor. And what I like most about it is the purity with which it portrays the doctor-patient relationship. But there's something else about the painting that I want to point out, and that's the child. That child will probably die. That's what this painting is all about. And these days, it, that child will probably die of whooping cough or rheumatic fever. These days, we really don't worry much about those conditions anymore because of advances in the 20th century. In fact, in the 20th century, we added more than 25 years to our lifespan. And I think we can safely call the 20th century the century of the lifespan. But what we really haven't done is think about how we're going to harness the power of those extra 25 years to live vibrant, healthy lives and add back to society. And I call that problem the health span. And we need to catch the health span up with a lifespan. One of the things that's going to be required to do that is to rethink a bit the doctor-patient relationship. So yes, I'd like to say that we should make the 21st century the century of the health span. And we actually are running out of time to make that happen. It's a complicated thing. Today I want to focus on healthcare delivery uh, as one of the challenges in making that happen. You see, by 2020, there will be more people over 65 than under five for the first time in history. And by 2050, 16% of the world's population will be over 65, double the number under five. And if you think about it, we're kind of running out of young people. Now, why does that matter in care delivery? Well, when you as a family caregiver or me as a healthcare professional deliver care, we pretty much always do it one to one. So the math is not lining up well, and we have to move to one to many. Now, other service industries have done this, in healthcare, we have not. And that's what I want to explore with you. The technology or the care delivery model to get us there is called connected health. And it's things like virtual visits with your doctor or using wearables data for feedback loops or, or mobile apps for engagement, tools like that. You've, you've all heard about some of this stuff. And I've been studying this care model for almost 25 years now, and I'm puzzled by why there hasn't been more adoption. Uh, and I think one reason is because, frankly, we've underimagined how we presented it to our patients and consumers. In fact, we're really at a place where technology is now competing with what humans do in service delivery, at least in healthcare, and that's bringing us in a very bad way. Now, we've all had this experience where you pick up the phone, you have a very nuanced question, one simple question. You just want to get a human being on the other end, and all you get is this endless array of menu options, you finally get frustrated and put the phone down. You never get your question answered. And I think that kind of automation is what a lot of consumers and patients fear that will be how we bring automation into healthcare delivery. So we can't do it that way. But other industries have managed to do a pretty good job of it. Think about Uber and Lyft and how they've taken all of the things that are a hassle out of getting a ride and put it into their mobile app and made it almost enjoyable to get a ride. Now the service is still delivered by a person, but everything around it makes that person more efficient and enhances your experience. The best we can do as healthcare is something what I call a parallel experience. You actually can get a virtual visit with a doctor these days. Probably won't be your own doctor, most certainly. And unfortunately, the record of that visit won't be shared with your doctor. So it, it's a completely parallel track, not really very imaginative at all. So we've, we've done a little bit in moving connected health forward, but we have a long, long way to go. Because the problem of bringing the health span into focus with a lifespan is bigger than technology or human beings can do alone. 
and yet we persist as humans in fighting with technology, trying to make sure that we can do things better, that tech can do better for us, and forgetting what it's like to be human. I read a really pivotal article in the Harvard Business Review a few months ago by Barry Liebert and Megan Beck, and the title paraphrased was, as we bring in more artificial intelligence, we need to focus more on emotional intelligence. And they point out that knowledge workers do these three things really well. Gather data, arrive at a conclusion, and synthesize a plan. And I thought about it, I said, as a doctor, I do that all day long. History and physical, diagnosis, care plan. And with no more artificial intelligence than what we have on the market today, machines can hardly do a better job of that than people can. But we persist in trying to do it better than machines can. Now, there are uniquely human traits. That's the thing. And we've kind of lost our way on those. They, they're things like caring, emotional intelligence, judgment, and attention to quality. These are things that we can do better than machines. But we're so busy fighting with technology, we haven't been able to do that. So together, machines and people can close the gap. That's where we need to get. Now, let me just tell you about how if we can do that and deepen that relationship, the connection will be even better than what we see in the painting. Here's an example. And there aren't many, trust me. Now, remember, the goal here with One to Many is that I, as a care provider, you need to feel cared for, but you're going to touch me less because, again, we're running out of people. We've got to do more One to Many. So this is an app we created in our own group called ePal. It's for patients who have cancer and are using pain meds. It's a chronic pain management application on their phone. And it does a lot of things. It's very interactive. It's very educational. It's meant to fill in the gaps that they can't, when they can't get to a doctor, they can't say have a doctor with them 24 hours a day. It's meant to fill in those gaps. And of course, because we don't want to erode their experience, there are several places in the use of the app where you can push a button and be connected directly to one of the doctors at the Massachusetts General Hospital. And when we studied this app, we noted two things. One was that the people who used it had lower pain scores so they achieved better pain control, but they called the doctor less. They felt more cared for using the technology than a control group, and they had less touches with the healthcare provider. That's what I mean by one to many. So how do we get there? Well, if you're a care provider, start looking for opportunities to outsource routine tasks to technologies, things like gathering data, synthesizing data, creating plans. We should be embracing technology to do those things better. And while we're doing that, retrain ourselves to be more human, to be more caring, to be more like the doctor in the Philbus painting. Now, if you're a supplier to our industry, well, help us get there by designing tools and, and, and solutions for our consumers and patients that get out of that under-imagined thing I talked about earlier. It's not a parallel track. It's completely integrated. Let us Give us tools that we can be more like Uber and Lyft as we conduct patient care and more efficient with our human interactions that are more powerful and more one-to-many. And if you're a patient, start to be vocal. We have this thing where doctors say to me, uh, my patients don't talk to me about this stuff. I don't think they really care. And yet, patients, of course, are thinking, why doesn't my doctor move into the 21st century? Be more vocal, have more conversations, get involved, help us design the future in the best possible way. I'm confident that my colleagues in healthcare provider, uh, my healthcare provider colleagues, are really in it because of the way this relationship is depicted and the painting. We all want to be caring individuals. The paradox is we have to adopt more technology to get there. Now, the tools to create one-to-many care models are here. They're in front of us. We need to outsource more routine tasks to technology, things like gathering data, formulating a plan. And we need to train ourselves to be more human, to bring in caring, to bring in emotional intelligence, judgment, and quality. We can do that. We can make the 21st century 
the century of the health span. Thank you.